to our first ever SGM Junior Division Online Peace Talk. I am Rika, your small but mighty mission guide of the day. Today, we're going to talk about a very important topic, and that is journey to banning the nukes. But wait a minute, what are nuclear weapons? We went around the nation and asked some of you, and these are some responses. Nuclear weapon is a very dangerous weapon. Stop! Nuclear weapons are very dangerous, and they can explode. They can explode half of the world. They are like small, small, but they are big one, and they are circle one, and they will kill people. Nuclear bombs is like kind of like explosion bombs. They can explode chemical reaction and guns. Explosive device that can explode and are, that are dangerous. No. 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 It will kill people's lives and it will ruin the city. I am afraid of losing my family, my colleagues. My friends, my family, and my dogs. I'm afraid of my family, school, my teacher, my friends, and my books. You can lose your parents, you can lose your house, and you can lose your friends. Because it will lose my sister. family, my friends, and my basketball dreams. Whoa! Those were interesting responses. So, are you ready to embark on this exciting journey with us? To be on this mission board, we are going to meet five small but mighty peace advocates at different pit stops. Hey! You are also given a special mission as they take turns to share with you your mission is to look out for secret codes that will be dropped throughout the journey. Do watch out for those secret codes and write them down. By the end of this journey, you will get the secret password to join us in this small but mighty club. Our first stop will be here, Hibakushas. Who are they? Why are they so important? Let's get started with Shizen and get ready for the secret code. Hello everyone! Thank you so much for being with us today on our first SGM Junior Division Online Peace Talk. My name is Shizen and I'm turning 9 years old. Joining me today are Ethan Chang, Ku Kyla, Dan Izen and Lui Jini. We are the Junior Division members of Soccer Gaka Malaysia and our topic today is Let's Ban Nuclear Weapons Everyone has a story to tell So too for the Hibakushas In fact, they have more than stories to share You see, they have gone through very painful journey and sufferings in order to survive They share their stories so that we will not forget and learn what peace truly means as the young global citizens. Known as Hibakushas, they are the victims who survived the atomic bomb which fell on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during the World War II in 1945. Since then, they have been suffering from the effects of radiation, loss of family and friends, and even discrimination. After 75 years, around 136,000 of them are still alive today. When the bombing happened, they were really young like us. Some were even babies. Thanks, Shizen, for telling us who the Hibakushas are. I am interested to find out more now. For those of you watching now, 
Before you head on to the next planet, the first secret code for you is ITS. Now, let's get you moving to meet my next friend, Izan, in Planet of the Paper Cranes. What happens? When I fold one thousand paper cranes. Hi everyone, I'm Izan. Today, I would like to share with you the most famous Hibakusha story of a young girl named Sadako Sasaki. Exposed to radiation at the age of two, she survived the atomic bombing in Hiroshima. But ten years later. She died at 12. Her story has inspired millions around the world. Today, when we see Paper Queen, we remember Sadako Sasaki and how her story became a symbol of peace and hope. Her surviving brother Masahiro is now a 79-year-old Himakusha. During the Hiroshima bombing in 1945, Masahiro was only 4 years old and Sadako was too. On that beautiful morning with blue sky, they were about to eat breakfast at home. Their house was just over a mile from ground zero. Without any warnings, the blast came in and they were pushed to the wall. Masahiro was pinned underneath the table. Their mother and grandmother were also inside and unhurt. However, Sadako had been blown outside the house, and her clothes were burned and torn. She was in deep shock, but not injured. No one knew what had happened. The blue sky turned very dark, and it was suddenly hot. They decided to walk to the nearby river. Along the way, they saw the smoke coming from many fires that were burning throughout the flattened city. According to Masahiro, the scenes were unbearable, but it was the human sufferings he remembers the most, especially a woman they walked by who was holding a dead baby in her arms. There were people with their skin peeling off and they were totally in shock. When they reached the riverbank, he saw lots of dead bodies floating by and people jumping in to cool off and dying. As they waited by the bridge, not knowing where to go or what to do, a thick rain started to fall. They were all exposed to this dark and dangerous water known as the black rain. Breathing or swallowing the water resulted in radiation poisoning. On that particular day, they had nothing to eat and were almost naked because their clothes had been burned by the blast. It was a miracle just to survive, said Masahiro. It took years for things to begin to return to normal. Like so many of their friends, Masahiro and his sister Sadako put the horrors of that day behind them. She grew up as an active girl and dreamed about her future. They both thought they were fine, but just less than 10 years after the bomb exploded, Sadako noticed she had swelling pain under her ears and was diagnosed as having leukemia, a type of blood cancer due to the radiation. The doctors informed her parents that she wouldn't live long. Sadako didn't want to die. Her father told her a Japanese legend that said, if she folded 1,000 paper cranes, her wish would come true. She and a friend at a hospital began furiously folding cranes. Her friend was later discharged, but sadly, Sadako had to stay back. Sadako folded more than 1,000 paper cranes, but unfortunately, she died not long after. From this episode, I feel that the number of paper cranes was less important than investing each one with her wish to live. Sadako was very brave, but as her health worsened, she asked her mother to stay with her one night 
she had never asked her mother to stay in the hospital with her. That night, her symptoms were getting unbearable and she couldn't eat anything. Her mother held Sadako close to her chest like a newborn baby, listening to story after story. She died later that day. Sadako's story spread throughout the country and the world. Her story and the paper crane have become a symbol of peace and a reminder that people yearn to live in peace. Sadako Sasaki's life was short, painful, but inspiring. Her brother, Mr. Masahiro, survives much longer. But Hibakusha will not live long to continue telling their stories. I believe all of us, the young people, must help Mr. Masahiro and all the Hibakushas to continue telling their painful stories to everyone so that no one in this world will ever experience that day again. The day when atomic bombs killed innocent lives and brought endless sufferings to the victims. That was a moving story. Before we proceed, your secret code for this mission is T-A-R. Now, let's get you moving to meet my next friend, Kyla, in Pit Stop Tree. He can't wait to meet you now. Hi, I am Kyla. I have a question for you. What do you have in mind when you hear the words Little Boy and Fat Man? Little Boy and Fat Man are the names for the first two atomic bombs detonated during World War II in 1945. On August 6, 1945, Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan by the USA. The explosion was huge. The city was destroyed and tens of thousands of people were killed instantly. Little Boy was about 3 meters long. A very large amount of heat is produced from a relatively small amount of uranium. That powerful. A small parachute was on the bomb to slow its drop so that the plane could fly away from the blast zone. Even the enemies themselves were afraid of the bombs. Three days later, on August 9, Fat Man was killed on Nagasaki. Again, the destruction was horrible. This inhumane action killed many innocent lives. Around 100,000 to 200,000 lives were killed instantly by the bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Many of them were common women and children. Over the next few months, about 350,000 lives were lost because of the effects of burns, radiation, sickness, injuries, malnutrition, and some other related illnesses. I have heard some stories about the bombings, and it seemed like hell on earth. The experience is so horrific that many Hibakushas found it painful to talk about it and to relieve the memories. The victims suffered so much. There are so many stories of babies and children who lost their mothers and fathers, or of parents seeing their children die. I really cannot imagine losing my family members. After these two horrific bombings, some world leaders didn't seem to have learned from history. Some countries want to have nuclear weapons because they believe that their enemies won't dare to attack them. This has always been their argument to have nuclear weapons. Today, more countries are making their nuclear weapons more powerful. There are also nuclear testings which are very harmful to all of us and our environment too. You may be thinking, this is insane, can't we do something to stop this? Of course, there are protests against nuclear weapons all over the world. It is challenging, but there are many countries and organizations that are working very hard to get rid and ban these weapons. In fact, there is also a new agreement or treaty that bans all activities of nuclear weapons. It is called the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. Let's pray and hope that more and more countries around the world support this nuclear ban, so that we can all live in a world free from the threat of these evil weapons. Thank you, Kyla. Nuclear weapons are an absolute evil. Okay, here's your third secret code, TSW. Now, are you ready for your next challenge? Let's go! 
at the next pit stop, we will find out more if the threat of nukes still exists. Hi everyone, I'm Ethan. The threat of the nuclear weapons today is real. No matter what reasons the world claimed to own nuclear weapons, everyone on Earth is facing a real threat. You and I, all of us, will die if nuclear war is to happen in just any part of the world. We may not be at the ground zero, but we'll still suffer the same consequences as Sadako and many other Hibakushas. Nuclear fallout can spread very far today. The countries will also be in ruins. At the ground zero of atomic bombings in Japan, did you know that an estimated 80,000 people were instantly killed by the intense heat? Most buildings, except those with strong steel structures, collapsed and cities were on fire. Human injuries were caused by severe burns or flying debris due to the explosive power. If a bomb were to explode right now, the explosion would create a blinding flash followed by extreme temperatures reaching 6,000 degrees Celsius. Imagine fireballs with crushing wind that burn everything in its path, like buildings, trees, vehicles, animals, and of course, people. In other words, everything at the ground zero of a nuclear explosion is vaporized by the extreme heat. Two words to describe the immediate environment, total devastation. Do you know what the long-term effects of these nuclear weapons are? Yes, it is nuclear radiation. Further from the ground zero, nuclear fallout spread to a greater area. If the victims are fortunate enough not to die during the explosion, unfortunately, they continue to suffer for decades to come. Over the years, many suffered slowly but painfully from various strains of cancer due to the effects of nuclear radiation. Pregnant women exposed to the bombings lost their babies to the radiation even if they survived. They were more likely to be born mentally retarded and physically impaired. There is only one word to describe nuclear radiation sickness. Torture. The strength of just two separate bombs back in 1945 was enough to destroy the entire cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But that was almost a century ago. With more advanced technology today, nuclear weapons are much more powerful. The strength of the current nuclear weapons or warheads is around 3,000 times the strength of the bombs that hit Hiroshima and Nagasaki. For example, just one British Trident nuclear submarine, which is considered a normal bomb today, has a total firepower of 24 megaton of TNT. This can easily destroy Hiroshima more than 1,000 times. Think about it. If two atomic bombs back in 1945 could be that disastrous, modern-day nuclear weapons are beyond imagination. I learned that if all the nuclear weapons were to be detonated at once, our Mother Earth and all its life could be destroyed for over 25 times. Everyone, including you and I, our loved ones, will be gone within 10 seconds. And did you know, over the years, there have been more than a thousand times when nuclear explosions could have happened by accident, mistake, or through an authorized launch. That is crazy. Hence, all of us must ensure that the similar horrors of atomic bombings will not be repeated ever again. People will die, survivors will suffer, dreams and the future of the victims will vanish. These things make us want to ban and end nuclear weapons now before the end us. Yes, we must get rid of nukes before the worst happen. Now, it is time to collect your mission for secret code. I-T-H. Hurry up and write them down to unlock your treasure later. Next, let's go to the I Can Do Something Planet. Hi everyone, I am Jeannie. 63 years ago, in 1957, second president of Soka Gakkai, Mr. Jose Toda, made a historic call to ban nuclear weapons in Japan. That day, 
also marked the starting point for global peace activities of the Soka Gagai. He believed that each of us, young or old, has this great potential and can contribute to world peace. Since we human beings are the ones who created the atomic bomb, so it is we who must end the bomb. Mr. Toda said, Although a movement calling for a ban on the testing of nuclear weapons has arisen around the world, it is my wish to go further, to attack the problem at its root. I want to expose and rip out the claws, the lie hidden in the very depths of such weapons. He highlighted that everyone has the right to live. Anyone who takes away that right from us is a devil or a monster. The president of Soka Gagai, Mr. Daisaku Ikeda, has continued the legacy. Since 1983, he has submitted his annual peace proposals to the United Nations and has driven to expand friendship and understanding among different people around the world. He says, If we are to put the end of nuclear terror behind us, we must struggle against the real enemy. The real enemy that we must confront is the ways of thinking that justify nuclear weapons. Whoa, that is mind-blowing. So, the real enemy and the root of this problem lies in the ways we think? I believe that what Mr. Toda and Mr. Ikeda were trying to tell us is that human beings created the bombs. Hence, the evil functions in human beings are far more destructive than the nuclear weapon itself. Only when we strive to dismantle the bomb in our hearts, we can then contribute to a peaceful world. I know, right? It is not easy to see the bomb in our hearts. Let me try to illustrate further. All of us have the tendencies to feel superior and powerful. We tend to look down on others, especially when we think we are stronger, better, smarter, or when we think we are always right, and we refuse to listen to others. Please look at this pyramid of violence. The threat of nuclear war, which we are discussing today, is at the top of the pyramid. Now look at the wider base of the pyramid. It represents the many people who are suffering from societal violence in their daily life. This kind of violence is like the bullying, name-calling, swearing, injustice, and discrimination of any kinds that can happen around us. These are the internal bombs that we may have in us. Look at the same pyramid again, and you will notice that we may seem to have the lowest level of control over nuclear violence. But the good news is that we have the highest level of control over societal violence. In other words, we may not be able to ban nuclear weapons immediately, but each of us can play a huge role to get rid of societal violence that is actually the base of all evils. Think about it this way. The daily things that can possibly happen at home or at school. What do we really mean when we roll our eyes at our friends? or if we fight with our siblings or parents. When our anger is no longer in our control, this may lead to shouting, hair pulling or kicking. Slowly, they lead to more bullying, arguments, violence and ultimately when we grow up, we justify and think it is okay to destroy others by using force and nuclear weapons. So, what can we do now? Before anything else, we need to check whether we have these internal bombs in us. See whether we are always angry with everyone and everything, whether we get jealous easily, or perhaps we seriously think we never make any mistakes. After checking our internal bombs, we must work on to control and to get rid of them. If we can dismantle this internal bomb by becoming a better person each day, we can create peace for ourselves and our immediate surroundings. For me, I learned that instead of getting angry, I can use words to talk it out to overcome the problem. See, it is actually not that difficult. Before we change the environment, we change ourselves first. Inheriting the spirit of Mr. Toda and Mr. Ikeda, we the young successors must continue this important mission of spreading this message of peace. Yes, nuclear weapons are evil, but we can for sure work together to ban them. Wow, I didn't know that each of us is so important. 
and we can contribute to world peace. Hey, some of you have also expressed your views. Peace is very important. Peace for me is when everybody are friends together and they don't hate anybody, they don't they are not envious and jealous of anybody. No wars, no nuclear weapons. Harmony, mercy. No war and no fighting. No people killing people. Um, help each other. Love each other. Be truthful, be grateful, be positive. People help each other and, and respect each other. Those were great responses. Okay, we are almost there. Your mission 5 secret code is ME. We're still at the I can do something planet. Before we end, let's ask small but mighty Shizan about what we can do. What can young people like us do? Firstly, we must have a desire to improve ourselves every day like being a better kid and friends. The moment we decide to be better, we are already a step towards creating a peaceful world. We can practice being kind starting from home. Let's greet our parents every morning happily and each time we come home from school. Thank them for their cooking and taking care of us. If we cherish our parents and siblings, we can treat others the same too. Kindness starts from me. Next, start taking actions and lead by example that it is possible to ban nuclear weapons. Though we are small, we are mighty. Each little step we take now will eventually turn into a big positive change. Let's research more and read good books. Only by reading and learning about the similar topics like this, we can understand better and can discuss further. We can then be truly capable when we grow up. In school, let's make more friends. No, not just making more friends, but also be good friends to others. Treat others the way we want to be treated, meaning we don't bully or hurt others. Let's practice using encouraging words to settle arguments and not with fists. Most importantly, we must respect our friends. We may be different in many ways, like I am Chinese, you are Malay or Indian. In the end, we are all just human beings. We are all global citizens. We don't have to agree with each other all the time. Most importantly is to respect the differences. Learn to see the beauty and strength in each other. We can also gather a group of friends who are keen in making positive changes within the school. Making our school safer, for example, having poster contests against nuclear weapons or any kind of violence, anti-bullying campaigns, etc. If there are no such program, let's start one. We can achieve so much more by working together. There's a whole list of suggestions we can give to you, but what is truly important? We need to be courageous and never give up on what we truly believe in. Only with courage, we can make positive changes. So let us all work together to create a peaceful world, free from nuclear weapons, shall we? Let's hope we have learned something from this session. Thank you so much for your time spent with us today. See you again! Stay safe! I determined to be courageous and read lots of good books to fill my mind with great knowledge and wisdom. I will study hard and achieve all my goals and dreams, no matter what. I promise to improve myself every single day and learn to be more patient. I want to grow up as someone who is committed to justice and help more people who are in need. I want to grow up strong and happy. I want to 
to meet lots of new friends and be a good friend to others too. Thank you so much to the five fantastic, small but mighty peace advocates. That was awesome. We are now at the end of the mission. Have you got all the secret codes to unlock the treasure chest? Congratulations, everyone! Yes, the password is. It starts with me. You are now a small but mighty peace advocate. Remember, everything begins from ourselves. The password to unlocking the treasure in life lies within us. Each of us has this unlimited power. This means we can contribute to a world free from nuclear weapons for everyone to live peacefully. The world is ours to change. So, no matter what, let's always have hope. Let's always have courage, and never ever give up. Once again, thank you so much for your time spent with us today. See you again. Bye. Bye.